Welcome back everybody. Just Mike here. Today we have another cuckoo clock to work on and so far I've gave a quick look at it and it looks like the winder to the music doesn't stay up so the winder needs to be repaired and I do believe we're going to go ahead and clean and oil this clock also. So anyway let's take a look at it. So here is the clock. Oops. I guess this is a sneak peek. Just a minute. This is the clock. This here of course is a topper. It's got a crack right there which is I'm going to be able to take this apart I do believe and fix it so that way it's not loose anymore and also looks a lot better than that. Besides Dusty which is normal this clock does have the music people there. It does have the cuckoo bird and a cobweb too. This has been setting around because they couldn't find someone to fix this clock and they're a little bit worried that it was going to be junked. And it does have sentimental values to them and this clock is well worth fixing. It came with two weights. The weights are a 375 and so I'm going to have to get another weight. Of course we have the horn here which is nice. It's not glued in. We have the pendulum and we have the set of horns that go to the deer and you'll notice that one is lost a piece there. This one's lost a piece there. When it's up on the wall you don't even notice that you'll notice the beauty of the clock. So as long as most of the horns there, I wouldn't worry about that. Now this clock, let's turn it around here. Now I have no idea, but I'm going to guess at one time years ago, this is $10 and what does that say? 94 cents. Now whether that was brand new or they found it used, I don't know. There's the, I do believe this is a two-tune clock. And let me go ahead and hook the weights up just to show you what we got going on here. Now I'm hooking it to the time side and I'm hooking it to the cuckoo bird. The music, this here is the music side. Here's the hook so it'd be the weight side. It continuously just pulls. So I'm going to look at that and see if I can possibly repair that or if I need a new uh, winder on there. Anyway, let me turn the minute hand. That's the half hour. And that's the hour. And it does no good to pull on this chain. I can get to get play, I guess, so I pull it lightly. Oops. There, that's the best I can do. So the first thing I'm going to do with this clock, I'm going to go ahead and take the nut off so I can get these hands pulled off. I'm going to take this wire and take it off so I can release, release the bird. That's kind of odd how the wire is up so high at an angle there, but that's how I found it. So we'll take a look at that too. So let me get those off and then we're going to go ahead. Oh dear. 
I don't see any screws and so that means this whistle box is glued on no screws here so that whistle box is glued on there's a chance I might not have to take those off we're gonna check that out as we do this but let me get those hands and the cuckoo bird released first get the nut off and then this one has a washer on top just a plain washer and the minute hand has this one inside so it does have a groove to go up into the hand and normally there are little teeth on, on that groove that will grab the hand so it doesn't slip that washer and nut are meant to press on here evidently so that way it will hold its place and of course it's got the square hole in it like I do believe they all do and on the hour hand you just it's this is wedged so this hour hand is just pressed on there you just wheel it back and forth and you can get it off of there Like I say, we got a bundle of cobwebs here. Now this wire is actually too long and it suggests in the book not to keep that wire super long and because it's hard to get out because of the angle that's been put in here I'm going to clip some of this off and now I should be able to lift it off a little bit easier there we go and in he goes you can lock this thing shut if you want the roof sticks out far enough that even if that flops open it's not going to be a big deal but if you think it's going to be a big deal make sure to go ahead and lock your door shut so the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these chains off I just open them straight up if this is an 8 day clock that has a heavier chain then I would give it a twist. This is a lightweight chain, so just take it off that way. Now on this clock, it looks like it's not going to make any difference on the chains of whether it goes to the music box or whether it goes to the time or the cuckoo and the reason why is inside here you can see there's a, another chain that that wraps around the end of the winder by the looks of it comes around this wheel here comes around this wheel here and that's what operates the music people and I think I can get this thing undone without taking the music bo box out right away otherwise there's a screw here a screw here and that should be it there could be one hiding in behind here sometimes which it's got a nail there and probably a staple down here no it's free So there's your two, the chain that makes the people go around, and this here is the winder part, which like I say, we'll have to take a look at that and see why it won't hold. So I'm going to take the bellow arms off, 
or the wires and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend these out to an L shape and just push them through and then I can go ahead and get them off and this way I don't have to disturb ungluing the whistle box itself and while we're here I'll take a small screwdriver split this open so I can get this out of the way so it's not so hard to pull this movement out and then this is a regular movement 25 made in West Germany I don't know if you can tell by if I got too much light or not but you can see where it's been oiled kind of overly and by the looks of it, the plating or the shellac I should call it is coming off the plates on the movement And for a special note, these have brass thimbles in them. That one's missing, that one's there, that one's missing. These two don't matter because they come, the windings come down straight from the music box. The reason why they put them in is because where the winders are, they have to sit at an angle to come down the hole so the clock looks right as the weights are falling. And... I think I'm missing one of the brass uh, deals there. I know there's one floating right there, but anyway, let me go ahead and get this moving out the best I can without bending these wires up too much. They should be fine as I'm starting to lift. I'm gonna have to watch the cuckoo bird too. There we go. So these wires go to the music box. One is to be li lifted, I do believe, to hold or to react as in pop this here out of the hole which would release this to start turning but then you have this wire here that holds on to the fan until the bird stops cuckooing when it does this here will raise up further and release the fan right here. Now I try to remember to show that. Now this fan has a plastic gear on it. The plastic gear isn't broken which is a good thing because you can't buy new ones. You just have to find a music box that has has one and I'm not talking a cuckoo box I'm talking like a jewelry box the sad thing is you'll be throwing that away because you're stealing either just the plastic gear or the hose shaft with the plastic gear on it in order to get your clock to start having the right sound again instead of the tick 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 sound uh, right down above right here what this thing is I can't remember I wrote it down already they're hard to find unless you have the exact word of what they call these things and they they're sold as a set of three slide this down in here anyway when you say that one's missing I don't know why it's missing because all the chains were in here and you'd think it'd be with this clock somewhere unless someone was in this clock and I don't see it in the movement either
So to get this off, to check it out better, I need to take this screw off. That goes to the b dancers. And then take these two screws loose to see what's wrong with this winder. Here we, we have an E-clip. And this whole thing might fall apart. You can see the ratchet's been slipping pretty bad for a while. So this clicker's wore out. And my friend Mark sent me his, which were, it might work, it might not, I don't know, because they're different, but the shaft is what holds the clicker. This clicker's wore out. This is the clicker that was on here. The only difference is this has the screw on the back side. This clicker will have the screw on the outside, and so I'll have a possible gap that I'm going to have to deal with. Although there's a chance I might still be able to make this thing work by not worrying as much about this but get it over a little bit more and that'll move the chains closer to the front but we're only talking a little bit. So here on the clicker I just took off of the parts clock from Mark. You notice how it's rounded or whatever. I'm going to take that off and take a file to it to try to give it some kind of a point again because this is on the verge of not working. So I got that tuned up a bit. Like I said, I did get that hole done. And I forgot this part of the clicker also needs the hole bigger. So this will go through. So anytime you're messing with the music box, it gives you headaches, especially when you can't find parts. And after finally getting that part on that Mark gave me, the the fan kept, we'll say, clicking. It would, it would run, but it'd stop or, or move up and down. And it's like, what's going on now? You'd almost think that the governor was worn out on it. Anyway, what I did, besides oiled it, because that's your first thing you want to do, but it didn't quite work, and so I took the governor off. When I put it back on, I gave it just a little bit of a cock to the, to the side, I guess we'll say. So when it's meeting up with the gear that goes to the actual teeth of the music box, I guess we'll call it, it seemed to be kind of like almost binding there which doesn't make sense because the teeth fit in there perfectly the best I could see but given it that little bit of a cock that seemed to run smoother still has that every once in a while tick or whatever but it plays smoothly so that's the best I can do on that one and I'll show it to you or have you hear it once I get this clock back together but let's get to the movement because the movement I need to clean it and get it all oiled up and ready to go too. So this is the movement. It's the 25 and the 25 is a one day clock. It's got the nice star wheel because it has the screw on it so you can get that off. Uh, it's a regular. There's, they're all pretty much the same. Now this has, what I've always related to is a I hate you <laughs> Uh, E-Clipper, where they call those on there. I ordered new of those, and they're a smaller hole. They don't seem to go on worth a hoot. Anyway, I had someone in the comments men mention another guy that works on clocks, and he has a tool, 
or has the tool that gets those things off. So this is on the bag. I don't know if that's what they call this tool. I do believe so. So this is the tool. And I personally would be surprised if it gets it off of there, but we're going to find out. Not that I'm ready to get that one out right yet, but let's do her. Oh my gosh. I can show getting those things off instead of that one, only one video I showed how I take these off carefully, yet I used to smack those things to drive that up and off of there so it would come off. And I got some grief <laughs> for it, so I'd never show it again. I do what it takes to get these things apart. Now on this movement, you can tell this thing's been clean before because this here's dull and you see a few I'm gonna call them shiny spots that's because the finish is coming off of this thing and so I'm not gonna worry about that finish I'm just gonna clean it and finish stripping that stuff off of there so I can get this thing looking better and for a customer, I would normally shine just this plate because it's the back. And if they open up the clock, that's what they see. Now, Mark does have a video out using uh, vinegar and diluted or whatever. Uh, that would work as well. I just as soon, like I said, once I get that stripped down, uh, on a normal movement like this, I just didn't use a polish on it and then wax it so it has a seal back on it. On your vintage clocks, where the gears are kind of an important thing to see also, I think that vinegar trick is a cat's meow. And you'll notice it's straight across, or this thing top is level, we'll say. People will mark where this bird is. You do that if you like. I figure that I need to set this bird. Or what I do is I set set the movement in I with the bird on there. Not very tight. You don't tighten these much anyway. And I realign it with the hole where he comes out. So that way I know I have it right. These wires here are what trigger and stop, trigger and stop. This is, stops the governor or the fan that's on the movement of the music box. And this is something that you're going to end up having to set after you get the movement cleaned and whatnot because there's... If you, even if you wanted to, I don't think there's any place where you can actually mark on here, scratch in here, in order to get this lined up. So it does have two screws. Just loosen them. And this is kind of nice having the two screws. I'm used to just one screw and this makes it a little bit tighter i guess we'll say a little more precise let's see i'm gonna go ahead and take these off that means i have to we'll say untie the wire for the gong Now that it's free, you can turn this to unlock it. And 
And now the rest should come out because they don't have a spring on them. And because this has a screw on it, which is the best ones, the newer ones, I do believe, don't have a screw. And if you leave it on here like usually I do, it goes to the winder and I just have to deal with it that way. You, If they didn't have the screw, supposedly you can turn these, which I've done it to a couple of them. I don't like it. I left them on cleaning it, but you would grab a hold of this or possibly right here. Be careful not to bend that so you want real low. And you can get this thing to turn because they're pressure fitted on there. And I did forget to mention in this video, especially if this is your first time before you take anything off of here, get pictures. Your main pictures, this shaft is the shaft for the hour and minute hand. So get the pictures on top, all the sides with this pointing down because the reason why it's pointing down is because when you put it back together this is going to be setting like this and you want those pictures to help you get this clock back together again so anyway i'm going to go ahead and take these off this e-clip here has a disc on it it holds your snail in place so it doesn't pop up out of place and it also holds this wheel here I'll put my legs on you can get a cup or dessert cup coffee cup if it's big enough and set on here to hold this up which these legs are to be turned around but put them on right now just to kind of show them off so here and these legs you can order on ebay they're going to cost you more there's a good chance if you go to uh, a working online clocks parts parts house you can get them for under thirty dollars for a set of four these here to get the cuckoo bird wire off you have to open those up a little bit the wire is just pushed underneath here for the spring of the clock you pop those open a little bit be careful twist your screwdriver to get them those to pop out and you see the springs already popped around so one well, that's only looks like one full turn or we'll say two and hopefully because this is different to you hopefully you got a better picture of this and what side this fits on which it would go here oops so we got that E clip off that E clip. Usually taking this off, depending on where that's sitting, you have to take the two off together. And then we can turn the snail a little bit farther so you don't have to. This here 
This here's what drops onto the snail to tell the clock how many times it's supposed to cuckoo. And this drops down because the snail stops this. This drops down and each one of these teeth as the Pac-Man with the wire sticking out of it goes across this, it counts how many cuckoos it's supposed, supposed to do. And right there is the Pac-Man as, as we're going to call it. It's not a professional name, but it's the easiest name for just anybody working on these to get an idea that kind of and anymore Pac-Man's getting <laughs> getting old so people might not even know what a Pac-Man is anymore but there's where it falls on it this here would be if it fell in this area it'd be one o'clock if it fell clear over into this area it would be 12 o'clock On this movement, it's got a helper spring to hold this down, and also when it's running on those teeth, cocking it, it's gonna help push this down so it does proper. I can see some bunch of oil sprayed in here or something. Anyway, here's that extra spring. You just lift it up, bring it around. Come back here, and it comes right off. So this one should come off also. It's got this little barrel all in one piece. Some of your older clocks, this barrel here is separate. So look underneath here. If this got the extension, fine. If it doesn't, find the rest of it sitting on there so you don't flip this thing around and lose it so means I took the clip off of there I should be able to get this out yep hairs fuzz that's why it's good to blow these things out so we have another one of these clips holding this one on and it's right there It's so nice to have that tool because it was nothing but a headache and you don't want a headache when you're working on these things and so I pretty much decided I didn't care how much it costs if I could actually find one not have to make one like the others do and hope it works but actually find the tool to do it I was willing to pay the money for it we're ready to take these four nuts off and I'm going to try to separate the plate so we can take another picture of the gears the way they're sitting so that way that might be the picture you're going to rely on to see where they go the pictures you took inside like this if this picture isn't good enough for you you can look in here and see where each one of these gears pretty much goes. This one happens to be a 732nd. Which I will admit is a little loose on there, so it's probably really a metric, but 
These aren't supposed to be on there that tight. They're supposed to be on there good and snug so it doesn't come apart when it's running. Let's come back here. So now we're ready to try to get this thing apart. Let me see something here. Right now I'm checking where this is a one day clock so it can have more wear where each one of these gears comes through compared to an eight day clock. Let me set these back in real quick because uh, what brings a cuckoo bird in and out fell off and I just want to line these gears up before we take a picture. A good thing to remember too, which is important, your winders, so you get the right one on the right side one face up, one face down, whatever. You got the picture now to help you here. And also the picture showing this one with the plastic gear underneath it. So anyway, let's pull this thing apart real quick. And the winders are holding good. It's got the good winder in there. I, I consider that a good winder when it has that wire with the actual little clicker in there. Besides, besides the worn, it's actually not too dirty and I was expecting worse. So that was the time side I took off. This is the cuckoo side. It's got the fan on here, or they call it the governor, and that's what slows the cuckoo down. This is sitting on there tight, which is good. Otherwise, if it wasn't on there tight, just flying around, it would make the cuckoo sound like he's on drugs. He'd just zzz and be through with it. I, this one won't come out because it has the Pac-Man on it. This one won't come out. Here we have an E clip. Let me take this off. As you saw, it's got that round part. That's because it has to go around this this gear here. There's our E clip. Now this will lift off. And that's it. This will stay because this here is pressure fit fitted, the washer, I guess we'll call it, and the spring there. And this has got the Pac Man on it. If I was to replace the bushing underneath here where the Pac-Man is, the Pac-Man is also pressure fitted on 
and you'd have to grab a hold of a pair of pliers or something and try to pry that off twisting it while you're holding the gear they have another you have a chance of getting it off by putting this underneath here and s squeezing it the only thing is it's not quite I think you start cutting the shaft so just grabbing a hold of it with a pair of pliers and twisting it if you had to get that off of there and that might help make this thing easier to time also even though I don't take it off I'd rather time this a, the, a different way so anyway by the looks of it I can stick these all in the cleaner and get them clean and then we'll be back when we put this thing together so this is after being in the cleaner and you can still see it's got some of the shine still on it there isn't any of the lacquer as far as I know still on it so like I say this is the one that faces out towards the outside of the clock and so I'm going to clean this one up because it's going to be the purdy side that's going to show everybody So after I get this done, I got to do that obviously, and then I'll do a wax on this. And then I'll clean out all the pivot holes. So this is it before I waxed it, but I have it polished so it looks even, looks brand new. Let's put a little wax on here. This side just had extra, so I just smeared it on there, wiped it off as nut. Show quality, don't care. This side is a side that really matters. Like I say, there's where the pendulum swings from, and this is the side that's going to show. Now, I will admit, since you wax this, this is going to be easy enough to get fingerprints on there. And realistically, I wouldn't worry about it. Wear gloves if you want to. But once you get this back together again and whatnot, you can take and buff those fingerprints off or even use a q-tip in there but don't be careful the q-tip because you could leave cotton threads behind and you don't want that but anyway I'm a lot happier with that than what it looked like when I first started where it was blotchy looking and here we can just pretty much say the before look and the after look So before putting this back together, like this, you want to go ahead and separate your pieces. All these pieces over here go to the outside of the clock. These few pieces here go to the inside of the clock. I'd separate them so that way you know for sure 
that you're not getting confused with all these pieces, you just have these few pieces to put in. So I put that in, get a little spot of oil on there, then put the E-clip back on. Warning pin. So you can see fingerprints on here. Let's just say now would probably be a good time to at least get most of them off before you start putting on the outside parts to the clock. So lately I haven't been showing oiling the clock and I've had a few subscribers mention that they wanted to see me oil the clock. The main thing about oiling the clock is you put just a little bit on there and then just a, let's say a drop. This here pin that I have, it sucks it back off. So this here will dump and suck it back off. Now you saw that big old blue. Remember, you want to take a tissue and touch each one of these again to get your extra oil off of there. Because the oil will collect dust.
Yes, that does wiggle a bit. I was looking at it, it's not too war, war out, we'll say. You don't want to put new bushings in unless it really needs it. And if this clock ended up having a problem, getting it going, that kind of stuff, I would definitely have to take this thing apart again and go ahead and bush. But like I say, this is a one-day clock, and it will take a lot of wear before you have to worry about uh, this thing not running or having a problem running. Here you can see the nasty side that no nobody sees. We get these back in and their clips back on. There and there. So when you get ready to set the timing, this here, I moved it so it dropped down so it's ready to, let's call it cuckoo. And doing that, now I can go ahead and turn this. Don't worry about the flopping of this because this is normally setting up a little bit, not falling down as far as it is. But you, you can see. The Pac-Man is ready to drop that lever, and it should stop there, but it's going just a little bit past. That very well could be good, but realistically, I'd like it to fall clear down into its mouth right there. And so, you got a choice of grabbing a hold of the Pac-Man and turning it, which is sometimes a little scary and you got to kind of hold on to your gears so they don't move or what I do is right here that's what's catching that warning pin and so what you got to do is first off the gear to back it up is turning this way around this way it's going clockwise and so what I need to do is figure out how far back I want to turn it and right now 
the pin is at the bottom and that's in in the mouth 